Hello and welcome back to Method of the Meadness. I am Burley Mullins and this ain't mead. As I'm sure a lot of you know, um, because a lot of you found my channel through this video, uh, Still It, um, Jesse over at Still It, uh, made and distilled some mead. Uh, and I don't know, actually, if this is the fresh mead or the mead that got some oak aging. Um, but I am excited to find out. Uh, <laughs> the color of the bottle makes it pretty impossible to tell. So you guys will be finding out along with me. I haven't opened it at all. It took a while to get here from New Zealand, but not this long. Sorry, Jesse. <laughs> Sorry, it took me quite so long. Uh, but I'm really interested to see what happens during the distillation process uh, to the flavors and smells of mead and uh, you know, what comes through. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour it in this uh, really ornate glass. Um, if you don't know, these are the uh, Norlin, um, Northern, Norlin tasting glasses. I prefer these to Glencairn's only because I have really large hands and the little nubs at the bottom of Glencairn's are hard to hold on to. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and pour some. And I apologize for the audio. My uh, <laughs> my microphone um, no longer likes being connected to my phone, which I'm still using as my camera. Uh, looking to get some updates on this pretty soon. Uh, but as we can see, um, there's definitely some oak influence on this. Uh, just from the color alone, uh, a distilled mead would be perfectly clear, like a vodka. Um, I am gonna go ahead and smell it. Oh, buddy. This uh, smells richly honeyed and oak forward. It reminds me a lot of, um, it reminds me a lot of uh, pot still Irish whiskey. Uh, there's a lot of sweetness to it. Um, a lot of which I would attribute to the oak, but some of it is probably from the honey itself. Uh, sweetness carries forward in the nose in mead, I find. And it looks like it carries forward through to the distillation process because this is honeyed, rich, uh, not as dense as the sweetness that I get from regular mead. I get mead that has not been distilled, but it is very much present. It's not 100% the warm, dense sweetness that you should recognize when you smell honey directly. But it's there. Um, now, if you have a nosing glass like this, or anyone that has a bowl that tapers to, um, you know, a narrower opening uh, that you would use for uh, nosing, uh, it may be a bit much um, for you to nose directly like this. You might want to open your mouth and breathe in through both your nose and your mouth to lessen some of the burning that uh, alcohol has. I remember reading somewhere on the uh, Norland Glasses site that they tried to make it so that the alcohol vapors shoot past your nose while the rest of it goes in. I'm not sure I buy that. Um, I just have been nosing a lot of spirits. <laughs> now, before I taste this, it's important to note that when you're nosing and tasting anything, one of the best ways you can do this is by actually comparing it to something either that you know very well or something very similar. Um, and I have been unable to get my hands on distilled mead uh, besides this. So in order to compare it, I had to get a little creative. Now, some of you may be familiar with the Whiskey Tribe uh, and the Crowded Barrel Whiskey Distillery. Well, a while back, I sent them a little 10 liter barrel that I had aged three different meads in 
Uh, so this pulls back a lot of the oak forward influence of the barrel and brings in, um, you know, the, the character of the mead along with any of the lignans and vanillins still in the wood that have not yet come out. Uh, and they uh, filled that barrel with uh, some bourbon, um, making this a finished bourbon. And I happen to have uh, what I believe to be the last of this in the world. <laughs> Uh, potentially making this the rarest whiskey ever produced by an, by an operating distillery, uh, since only 10 liters of it ever existed, and only uh, maybe uh, 20 milliliters still exist in the world. <laughs> um, I'm really happy to have been part of this experiment. I've tasted this before. I unfortunately, unfortunately it's my favorite whiskey that I've ever had. <laughs> Uh, and I say unfortunately because that this is all that there's left. That it's gone, <laughs> and I'm going to share this experience with you guys in the only way that I know how, which is through a YouTube video. I can't uh, split this out molecule by molecule and have you all be able to taste it on your end. Uh, and maybe some of you have been able to taste it. They offered pours of it in their tasting room, leaving myself just a little taste for later. <laughs> And let's see. Okay, there's definitely a lot of um, grain notes in and amongst the oak here. There's, um, this was aged in Texas, so there's a lot of character that gets pumped in just through the cycles of like heat and cool through the summer and winter. And you know, the hotter days and cooler nights that sometimes happen. And so, this is very definitively a whiskey <laughs> on the nose. But again, there's still some honey sweetness from the barrel itself. Not nearly as prominent as this, which is something I would expect. Yeah, this is. In comparison, this is like candied. This is uh, real sweet, um, sort of um, like uh, pixie sticks. If there was a honey flavored pix <laughs> pixie stick, if that makes sense, um, at least on the nose. Yeah, this has like a where there's original note undercurrent to it. Um, you know, you get some caramels uh, and you can definitely smell the corn and grain notes through it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and give this one a taste. Mm. Ooh. Yeah, it is. It is like a lightly burnt honey on the taste in, in a really good way. If you've ever made a bochet, uh, you know the note that I'm talking about where, it, um, where you take the honey and scorch it to the point where the smoke starts to appear and then you add that to a mead. Um, this, it is whew, a lot of sweetness got carried through the distillation. Um, and if I remember right, it wasn't terribly sweet going into the distillation. So it's interesting to see that that note got dialed up. Um, and it is. And some of the sweetness might be coming from the oak as well. Uh, but there is definitely a sweetness to this that is not oak. Um, ooh, it tastes... It tastes like a particularly sweet old-fashioned. <laughs> um, you know, heavy on the, uh, heavy on the simple syrup, uh, heavy on the whiskey, actually. This does carry some notes familiar to anyone who's had whiskey. Um, but lighter, brighter and sweeter. 
again, this actually harkens back for me to pot still Irish whiskey. Uh, this, uh, I, I would compare this, uh, at least to my memory bank of what red breast and like red breast cask strength specifically tastes like to me. Um, I know I'm gonna, while I'm here, I'm gonna... Mm. Yeah, this is a uh, dryer, um, and there's a musty, dusty note from the grain. Um, it sounds, it sounds unpleasant when I put it that way but it is like greeting an old friend. Um, and because uh, I got into whiskey when I was, um, you know, first really getting into mead, uh, there, wasn't, there, there wasn't a ton of community online outside of uh, really technical brewers forums at the time. And that just wasn't my scene. Um, I enjoyed the hobby, I enjoyed the craft, I wasn't really into, uh, at the time I wasn't into, like, the full nuts and bolts of the fermentation process. I've since come to love that, uh, separately, but through my own experimentation. Um, but what was available was a lot of whiskey communities. And it was adjacent enough for me to uh, take a dive into that, and that's how this came to be, actually, this delicious, delicious drink. And and yes, it's, it's drier. It's still very sweet. It was a bourbon that went into a mead barrel. This is sweet. Uh, but there's a dry, uh, woody undernote to it. And there's still a punch of sweetness at the top on this one. Uh, let me go back to this, since this is the one that the video is really about. And yeah, after coming back to it, there's now a little bit of astringency from the oak. You know, I can feel my cheeks drawing in from the tannins from the oak. And it is an absolute delight. I wish there were more of both of these. I would keep both of them stocked in my cabinet at all times, I would never let these run out. I am delighted to find as much meat character come through in the final product as did. Uh, this is undeniably honey. Um, and this is still undeniably honey, <laughs> just in a very different way. I'm really glad I did this. I did this comparison on a whim to show comparative tasting, and I came out with a newfound appreciation of this, and I love this so much. And it holds very, uh, it holds up very well in comparison. Uh, so Jesse, if you're watching this and you get the chance to make more of this, I know it's really expensive, <laughs> but please, please <laughs> make more. It is delightful. <laughs> Oh, this has been Method to the Meekness. It's been good to see you.